So today, we welcome Chris from Hoyt, who knits all our cashmere accessories, scarves, socks, um, and hats. And Chris is going to tell us all about why cashmere is so special, why the town of Hoyt is so famous for its, for its cashmere, um, and how the products are made. So how did you end up in the knitwear industry, Chris? What brought you to? Well, obviously, uh, living in Hoyk, which which is famous for its uh, for its knitwear, uh, a lot of a lot of people started off. They, they entered into the into the factories, and uh, so I started off uh, in the in the yarn store, and then kind of worked my way through the factory, and then. Uh, to work here at the scarf company. So the, the company uh, initially started with, with uh, my father-in-law who was a hand knitter and he, he had a small business with uh, hand knitting machines uh, and we, we still have the machines to this day. Uh, we, don't, we don't really use them now mm -hmm. but uh, yeah that's, that's where, where it all began. We, we had one machine, uh, a scarf machine uh, in a garage mm -hmm. and then uh, as, as things developed we uh, we bought another scarf machine and then we moved up to here, uh, larger premises and uh, we, we were very successful with the, the stripy scarves and then we, we could see that things were changing so we, we started to get into the accessories mm -hmm. uh, we bought a glove machine which, which made the, the gloves and, uh, and then and then we invested further with the Shima uh, whole garment technology uh, to knit the various products, the, the hats, the scarves, the gloves, and uh, where we used to make most of our products in lambs, we, we kind of switched to cashmere. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's, that's basically how the business kind of grew and developed. Uh, and we're now probably 90% Cashmere. Mm -hmm. uh, so why cashmere? Why is cashmere so special? Uh, it's it's well renowned for, for being a luxurious, uh, soft uh, fibre. What makes a really good cashmere? Because there's there's different qualities of cashmere. Yeah. So if I go into a high street store and buy cashmere, it's very different to the cashmere is, made yeah. here in Hollywood. Yeah. So what makes that so special? Uh, technically, that they, they have. They have different areas in, in like say Mongolia and China where they, 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 they comb the, the, under, the, the under the chin of the, the, the goat uh, and they have different lengths of, of fibre. So there's, there's certain lengths which uh, create a, a more, a better yarn. Uh, so we, we buy from the, the, the fibre the, with the micron that is lends itself to a more luxurious product, so the cost varies. Uh, and, but all, all our cashmere is, is 100%, uh, whereas people make blends as well, so, so there, there's some differences there. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we buy the, the cashmere, uh, the raw material, uh, and we have a range of colours, and then we put the yarn onto the machine, knit the product, and then uh, the Scottish water lends itself to, the, its, its softness lends itself to, to get in a, a really soft finish, which is, which is why Scottish cashmere uh, is, is classed as probably the, the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And you don't, like you wouldn't normally associate washing with wool, that doesn't something that kind of goes together. No. So I think for our customers it's often quite interesting to know that you finish every product, that washing is a really key part of, it is, of yeah. making the garment. So just break the, that process down. So yeah, so the, the yarn, when, when we buy the yarn, it has it has the oil, the, the oil is still in the yarn to blend it, to give it strength for, mm -hmm. for when we're knitting it on the machine and it's got to go through the needles. So then it, it's called it's, it's called greasy uh, knitting. So then when the product comes off the machine, we uh, we were taking the, the oil out of the, the yarn when we wash it, uh, and that makes it soft. So mm -hmm. so cashmere is not really something that you, you 
want to be washing after yep. after the initial the initial wash. So uh, it's more more like a hand wash. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, and then and then we we press it and uh, target. And <laughs> that's the product ready. ready to yeah. Go. So when we were talking about finishing, this is the scarf, a cable knit scarf, in its greasy state before it is finished and washed. And then you can see the beautiful softness and finish of the scarf once it's been through the, the washing process. And so tell us about the two machines that we looked at, because we, we looked at the older um, sock machine and then we looked at the really yeah. flash new one. So yeah. how's technology yeah, so so like so the older one in the in the film was uh, it was a British made one uh, from probably 50, 60 years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it was more mechanical. But as electronics were, were developing and uh, other companies were, were trying to think of ways to improve the, the efficiency and, and 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 bring more uh, styles into. Uh, it, it's moved on, and, and the, the electronic machine that's in the film uh, is is the latest, the latest one uh, on the market, and you can do stripes and uh, different kinds of stitches, and and it also links the links the toe. So basically, when the sock comes off the machine, it's uh, it's finished, and you, you just wash it. Uh, and then and then press it. Whereas the old machine, there was a, a lot more work to do to it after it came off the machine. You had to you had to link it, uh, and then there was some other processes involved with the linking to, to get the final product. So so yeah, uh, technology uh, has, has certainly moved on. Yeah, you cut down on your sewing skills yeah. required. <laughs> yeah. So Chris, we were looking at the sock machine uh, and how that works. So can you talk us through the the process? What happened? Yeah, so uh, obviously you have to thread the machine up with the with the right yarn, and then uh, it's a it's called circular knitting. So the the, the yarn feeder comes in, and, and the and the cylinder turns round, and it knits the sock uh, circular tubular. So it knits the the cuff first, and then it moves down the leg, and then it, it knits the, the heel, and then the, the foot of the, the sock. And then the clever part about the, the new machines is, is that the, you'll, you'll notice that the, the head opens up and then the, the linking arm comes across, picks the sock up, transfers all the needles and then takes the sock across to the, the linking device and then, and then you'll see the, the, the kind of sewing device which, which closes the toe and then once it's finished uh, the sock goes around the tube and comes out finished. Chris, if I want to join the knitting industry, the knitwear industry, what skills do you need? Because I, when we came in here, I've seen people um, work in the machines. I know that you design the product as well, and you create new product all the time. So, what kind of different skills do you look for as a company, and what what did you, what have you had to learn as you went along? Yeah, I mean, with with the scarf company, we, as you've noticed, that everybody can do various jobs for them. All multi-skilled. Uh, you need you need some technical knowledge on, on running the machines because they, they don't always uh, go to plan. Mm -hmm. So so you need to understand what the what the issues are with them. But we we can all uh, we can all knit on every machine. We can all hand sew. We can uh, put the tabs on. So it's yeah. It's just it's just everybody working as a team and and uh, having the knowledge of. Of every aspect of, of making a, a glove from scratch or, mm -hmm. or a scarf or a sock. Uh, so yeah it's just a general all-round knowledge of, of knitting uh, and finishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and about when you were at school you didn't think you were going to learn to hand sew. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if my mum actually knows that I can, I can sew. But, uh, <laughs> you can hand sew Chris but can you knit? No, I can't knit. Uh, all our knitting is done on, on machines. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a skill, you'll have to learn that. That's, that's right, yeah.
I hope you've enjoyed our cashmere journey here today and learnt lots about why cashmere made in Scotland is so special. I have in my arms here a range of some of the most beautiful luxurious products and produced using the processes we've demonstrated today. Anything from men's gloves, fingerless, full finger, lovely triple ply so you've got triple warmth there, cable knit um, socks which you saw on our favourite sock machine and my favourite product the wristlet, perfect for hanging out your washing and doing your texting on the go. Thank you for joining us.